Hello and welcome. This video is an introduction to probability distributions. A probability distribution is a table or equation that determines the probability or odds for all possible future outcomes. The most simple way of explaining probability distributions is to show an example using men's height. Let's say that the average height for men is 5 feet 9 inches. Probably it isn't, but for this example, we are pretending that it is. If I measure men's height and make a graph of the results rounded to the nearest inch, we see a large spike at 5 feet 9 inches that declines as we move away from 5 feet 9 inches. The height that occurs most is 5 feet 9, and the next most common heights would be the closest heights to 5 9, meaning that the next most common heights would be 5 feet 8 inches and 5 feet 10 inches, and the frequency of occurrence would decline in a stair-step manner moving away from 5 feet 9. If I round the measurements to the nearest one-tenth inch, we again would see a large spike at 5.9 that declines in a stair-step manner as we move away from 5.9. We can use these graphs to make inferences about what will happen in the future. For instance, the graph shows us that there is a 50% chance that a male child will grow up to be above 5 foot 9 inches and a 50% chance that he will grow to a height below that. One can calculate out the probability or odds that a child will be between 5 foot 8 inches and 5 foot 10 inches, or between 5 7 and 5 11, or between any two heights. We could also calculate out the probability or odds that a male will grow above or below a certain height. In all three examples, we rounded the data, which means when we graphed the results, the graph formed a histogram around the average of the heights. We can increase the resolution of the data by rounding to the nearest one hundredth of an inch, one thousandth of an inch, and so forth. As we increase the resolution, the graph will approach a normal distribution bell-shaped graph, which brings us to continuous graphs and the central limit theorem. Because someone's height is a random number, the central limit theorem tells us that if we make a graph of men's height and we graph enough data, the graph should form a normal distribution bell-shaped graph. A continuous distribution, such as the normal distribution, determines the probability for all possible outcomes. The most common continuous distribution is the normal distribution, which is the standard bell graph, but there are other distributions as well, such as a t-distribution, which we will cover in later videos. Like a histogram, we can use a continuous distribution to determine the probability or odds of possible future outcomes such as the odds of a man being above or below a certain height, or between two heights. There are advantages to using a continuous distribution graph to determine future probability over using a histogram. However, both have their strengths and weaknesses. The discrete histogram and the continuous distribution such as the normal distribution are used along with statistical tools to model future outcome and probability of occurrence. We can use this type of modeling to determine probability of future returns of an asset. We can create a histogram of the periodic daily returns for that asset and use it to make inferences about future asset returns. In other words, we can use the histogram to determine the probability or odds of what will happen in the future. Like men's height, asset returns are also a random number. In other words, an asset such as a stock can increase or decrease any percentage. Therefore, the central limit theorem states that if we graph the periodic returns of an asset and we graph enough returns, that graph will also form a normal distribution bell-shaped graph. The normal distribution follows the empirical rule, meaning that 68% of the data will fall within one standard deviation of the mean and 95% of the data will fall within two standard deviations of the mean. For a complete understanding of standard deviation, please see my three-part series on the standard deviation. So that is a basic introduction of probability distributions. Don't worry if you do not have a full grasp of the concepts just yet. Future videos will clear things up. In the next videos, we will create asset return histograms and normal distributions step by step. From there, we head into modeling future outcomes. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.